Good evening, everyone, and again, welcome to Wednesday Night Dinner. Thank you for joining us uh, on tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, pull up a chair, uh, come to the table, Amen. have a seat, <laughs> bring your Bibles, and bring your notepad. Amen. We are going to be studying that tonight from Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 11 is where we're going to be studying from uh, on tonight. Now, I've asked you guys to go ahead and read chapter 6. Now, I'm going to assume that 95% of you all went ahead and read Hosea chapter 6. Now, for that other 5%, I'm going to read this chapter so they can have an overview of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Now, I entitled tonight's lesson, A Call to Repentance. A Call to Repentance. Now, if you have your Bibles and you're ready for dinner tonight, let's launch into Hosea chapter 6. Verse number one says, come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn and he has healed us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain, and the former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O oh, Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as the morning cloud, and as the early dew, it goeth away. Therefore have I hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them yes. by the words of my mouth. And thy judgment yeah. are as a light that goeth forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of the priests murders in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is Hodom and Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O oh Judah, he has set and harvest for thee. When I return, the captivity of my people. Thus is the reading of Hosea chapter 6. But it's interesting because in Hosea chapter 6, you must keep it in the context because the context of Hosea chapter 6 don't start with verse 1 in chapter 6. Matter of fact, the thought 
begins back in chapter 5. Now, I don't know if we covered this on last week or not, but when you go back to chapter 5, now, remember, uh, the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. Therefore, we have to make sure that when we read a text, that wherever we start, we start with the beginning now of the thought. Now, the thought of Hosea chapter 6 actually begin back in chapter 5 and verse 13. Now, notice what he says. I'm going to read 13, 14, and 15. He says, when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to Assyria and sent to the king Jebrel. Yet could he not heal you, nor cure you of your wound. Now, what's, what's happening here? What's happening here is that Ho Hosea is saying that Ephraim, now, another word for Ephraim is Israel. I think we covered that before. Whenever you use the word Ephraim, it's really referring to the ten northern tribes. It is the tribes of Israel. Now, the reason why he oftentimes uses Ephraim, because Ephraim was the largest uh, of the tribe. Also, it used it because of the location of which it was located. So when God says Ephraim, he's not just talking about one tribe. He's really talking about the whole northern kingdom of Israel. He said, Ephraim, Israel, was sick. Judah was wounded. Here's what Ephraim did. Ephraim did not want to obey God. Ephraim wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to live like they wanted to live. They wanted to worship these idol gods. So therefore, since God was on their back per se, what Ephraim decided to do, he decided that they were going to go to the Assyrians. Now keep in mind, the Assyrians were the enemies of God's people. They were a wealthy place. They were a mighty people during this time. So Israel decided they would leave the one true God to help you. God said they can't even heal you. But guess who could? Jehovah God, Yahweh, was the one that could heal them and also cure Judah of their wounds. Yes. But they would go off. Now, don't we sometimes do the same thing? Now, we sometimes fail to obey God. We want to do what we don't want to do what God said, so we'll go off into sin because it's, to us, it's much better. We think the rewards of being in sin and in the enemy's camp is going to be better than what God says. But God says, the Assyrians can't cure you. They can't help you. Only I can help you. Now notice verse 14. He said, for I will be unto Ephraim as a lion. Now when you think about a lion, what do you think? Most come to my mind is the Lion of Judah. Maybe Jesus is talking about here that Jesus, the Messiah, the Lion of Judah. Guess what he's going to do? He said to Ephraim, I'm going to be a Lion, but to Judah, I'm going to be a young Lion. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tear you apart. He says, I, even I, We'll tear, and guess what I'm going to do? Once I tear you apart, keep have this picture in your mind of a wild lion tearing its prey apart. Yes. And once he tears it apart, yes. he'll leave. God said, I'm going to tear you apart like a lion. 
and then I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go away. And I will take away and none shall rescue you. But then 15, he said, I will go. Yes. And I will return to my place. Yes. Till they acknowledge their offense. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want God to leave me. I don't want God to go and return to his place. I want the very presence of God to remain with me. Here he said, I'm going to leave you and I'm going to go to my place. And I'm going to stay there until you acknowledge your offense. Till you acknowledge your guilt. Then and you seek my face. In their afflictions, he said they will seek me early. God says, here's what I'm going to do, Israel. I'm going to tear you apart. And then I'm going to go away. I'm going to go back to my place. Since you all don't want to have anything to do with me, guess what? I will just leave you alone, and I will let you have your way. Go on to the Assyrians if you want to. He said, but I'm going to stay away until you acknowledge your guilt. Amen. Acknowledge your wrong. Acknowledge what you have done, how you have hurt me. Because mm. until you acknowledge that, I'm going to stay away. And guess what? And I'm going to stay away until you seek my face. Now, that's a very interesting word when you talk about seeking uh, his face. Actually, it comes from the Hebrew word bakash. Bakash. Bakash literally means to require, it means to desire, mm. it means to request. This word carries the idea to seek, to find, to seek, to secure, to seek the face. It means to be sought after or to search out for. It's a very interesting word. God says that I'm going to wait till you acknowledge your guilt. And then I'm going to wait until you bakash, until you have a desire and that you will be required to look to my face. I'm reminded of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 29, verse 13, it says, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of, of your heart. Again, Jeremiah is, is saying similar to what Hosea said. God said, I'm going to stay away till you seek me. Here Jeremiah said, when you seek me, you'll find me. But you're not going to find me until you seek me because I'm going to leave. I am going to go away. But here's the key. He said, you're just not going to haphazardly jump up and find me. He said, you're going to have to search for me with all of your heart. Yes. Same way Jesus said, you got to love me with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your might. Jeremiah said, you got to seek God with everything that is in you. It ain't just going to happen. You got to seek it. Require it. You got to search diligently for him. I like what the Hebrew writer says. The Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, very familiar passage, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that does what? Diligently yes, seek him. Make every he said, you got to seek me. You got to search for me. You got to put in some work, uh, equity, sweat equity, in order to seek me. Yes, 
put in uh, some hard work, endeavor to seek me, he says. Then in the book of Numbers, chapter 6 and verse number 24 through 26, again, it's a familiar passage, but I want to show you something in this passage that we may have overlooked. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, the Bible says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee, and the Lord to make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. When have you ever heard that? Usually, we, heard, we hear that at the end of a prayer. Usually, we hear that as a benediction, that the Lord bless thee and keep thee, and may the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. But let me tell you, what that passage is saying is when he says, may the Lord make his face, he's actually talking about a blessing. This text is about a blessing. So when we use that at the end of a prayer, it's actually talking about, may the Lord bless you. That's what he said, may he make his face to shine upon you, to bless you and be gracious unto you. Now, that's verse 15 in chapter 5. Now, let's get into chapter 6 if we want to cover these 11 verses on tonight. Now, verse 1 says, come, let us return to the Lord. Now, you want to read that again in the book of Hosea. Matter of fact, when you get over to Hosea chapter 14, and the verse is number one, he says, Oh, Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have fallen by your iniquity. Here he says, you need to return. Come back to me. Some version says, come on, Israel. Don't stay out there too long. Amen. Come on back Amen. to me. Oh. And we can say the same yes. sentiment yes. to those who once was yes. faithful to the Lord, like mm. Israel was faithful to God, yes. but they left God, went after other lovers. They became prostitutes and with other one gods. And, and God now says through the prophet Hosea, Come on, come back to me. But my issue is with Israel. Why would they leave such a faithful God? Why would this nation that had everything, why would they leave the God that provided for them and go back yes. unto these idol yes. gods and worship idol God like the Egyptians did. Why would they do that? You know, if we're not careful, yes. we may find ourselves as a nation doing exactly the same thing. Because when I look at this nation, the nation that we live in, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, Psalm 33 and verse number 12. See, as a nation, we need to return to the Lord. Someone has said that the problem with Israel was a spiritual problem. If that is true, then the problem with this nation is a spiritual problem. Now, I know we in this pandemic. I know that there is injustice all around us. I realize that there is racial profiling. I understand that there are loss of jobs and looting and, viol and violence. I understand that there are loss of lives. But the real problem is not so much 
week. as the injustice. Mm. It's not so much mm. as the pandemic, Mercy. and that is real. Mercy. But I believe when you look at the nation that you and I live in and compare it to Israel, we have the exact same problem, and that is a spiritual problem. Why was it a spiritual problem with Israel? Because the priests, the spiritual leaders, leaders, were not teaching the, the people. And because of a lack of knowledge about God, the people had a tendency to follow after false gods. Mm. Here's the problem in our nation. Yes. Because spiritual leaders, elders, and preachers, are not preaching and teaching the people the word of God. And therefore, many individuals are going off and they see nothing to this thing called Christianity and religion. The nuns are the fastest growing religious huh. group in this country. And, and they are that group that that they believe in God, but they just don't believe in church. They believe in God, but they just don't believe in Christianity. That is a growing segment in our society today, and it's called the nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Now, here's what's happening, because we, and I'm putting myself in that category, because we're not teaching the, the people about the love of God and how God is there for them. You see all of this injustice and killing and murdering and stealing and robbing and everything going on in the world today. Why? Because people don't have God in their lives. We have a spiritual problem just like Israel had a spiritual problem. So then he goes on in verse number two. And verse number two, he says, after two days will I revive, he revive us. And the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Another one said that we may live in his presence. Yes. Not what is the first thing come to your mind when you read verse 2? Now, don't get too theological, old man. When you just, when I said that after two days, and then on the third day, you're going to write what, what comes to your mind? Sunday. The resurrection of Jesus. Resurrection. First thing come to your mind. That was the first thing that came to my mind. So I did a little research on that and see if, if Hosea, was actually prophesying or predicting the resurrection of Jesus. Now, technically, I don't believe that's what he had in mind. Now, if you want to believe that, go ahead. But I don't believe Hosea was actually referring to the resurrection of Jesus. Now, it, it can make sense if you say that, but in the text... I just want to, I want to be, I want to do justice to the text. I don't think that's what Hosea was referring to. Because Hosea said in just a short time, he's going to restore us. Now, who is the us that he's talking about? He's talking about Ephraim. He's talking about Israel that have left. Now, the two days, three days can be symbolic. Uh, you know, that, that can be a hyperbole. Uh, that actually can talk about because a day uh, with God is that a thousand years. So I don't know if he's really talking about the resurrection or not. There, there are mixed uh, interpretations, even commentaries, uh, scholars may differ on that verse. So I'm not even going to try to explain it, not even going to try to deal with it, okay? So let's move on to verse 3. Verse 3 said, let us press on to know him. Let us press on to know him. I like another verse that let us pursue to know him. Let, let, let us work 
at getting to know God. Now again, they didn't know God. Why? Because the priest, the leaders, was not teaching them the word of God. So here's what we have. We have a group of people that are not uh, obeying God. And here Hosea says, I won't let us press on to know him. Not like he said, let us. I think the King James Version says, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. See, you're going to have to get to know uh, him. Pursue the knowledge uh, of our Lord. Remember, we talked about that back in Hosea 4. And verse number 6, my people, he said, are destroyed. Why? For a lack uh, of knowledge. So we need to really get to know the Lord. Now that's, that's going to take more. Now can I be honest with you tonight? That's going to take more than just you coming to the dinner table on Wednesday night. That's going to take more than you just coming on Sunday morning or viewing us on Facebook Live on Sunday. It's going to take more than that. It's going to take you pursuing the word of God. You really want to get to know him. You want to get to why you would have an intimate relationship with him. And you got to spend some time in his word. Now, I'm not talking about just reading it. That's okay. It's okay just to read it. That gets you a knowledge of the word. But once you read it, you need to go back and read it again and spend some time in it and meditate on that word and ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate that word to you. Get to know him is what uh, Hosea is saying here in verse 3. But then you get to verse 4. Verse 4 says, what shall... I do unto thee. See, he, he asked Ephraim, Israel, a question. What more could I have done for you? I, I think he's asking Israel, he said, think back of what I have done for you. Remember how I sent Moses into Egypt and delivered you from under Egyptian bondage. Remember that. It was I that did that for you. It was I that brought you through the desert. It was I that gave you food from heaven and water from a rock. It was I that protected you in the day by a cloud. It was I that brought you across the Red Sea. It was I that did not allow your clothes uh, to wear out, neither your shoes uh, to wear out. It was I that protected you from your enemies. It was I that won battles for you when you didn't even have to fight. He said, I did that all for you, Israel. What more Mercy. could I have done? Mm. But out of all the things that God had did for Israel, they still left him and went after foreign gods. You see, it could have been more. Matter of fact, he, he, I, I'm surprised that even sometimes you and I as parents, sometimes we can do all of this for our children and they still don't act right. They still go off. Why is that? And sometimes it kind of make you want to say to your own children, like God said to Israel, what more could I have done? Why did you go that route? Why did you leave the teaching? Why did you uh, go off and hook up with, with sinners and, and, and give your life to them? Why did you leave 
God said, Israel, what more could I have done for you? Now think about it. God had done everything for Israel. He said, what more could I have done? You know, I'm amazed. Sometimes you watch television or you may even know it in real life. How sometimes wealthy parents seem like sometimes their are children that have it all. They are the one get hooked on drugs or become alcoholics. You know, why, why is that? They had it all, but they threw it away. God says, Israel, you had it all, and you threw it away. He says, I'm going to tear you to pieces, and I'm going to leave you. What a sad, sad commentary that that is on Israel. But let us not be too hard on Israel. Because we may find ourselves in the same situation as Israel was. So he says here in verse number four, he says, I'm going to come. He says, the Lord is going to go forth and prepare as the morning and shall become as the ring, and as the latter, and the former ring. Oh, Ephraim, what else could I do? Oh, Judah, what else could I have done for you? For your goodness your is as a morning cloud. Ah. You know what he's really saying here? He's saying... Your goodness only lasted as long as the morning cloud. When the cloud comes up in the morning, before that sun comes out, he said, that's just how quick your love for me really is. Mm. You didn't love me with all of your heart. You didn't love me with everything. He said, your love for me was just like the morning cloud. He said, your love for me, he said, was just like the morning dew. He said, why do you love me like dew that goes away early in the morning? Why is it that you did not stay with me? God is asking Judah and Israel a question here. and They got to answer that question. And I'm going to ask you the same question tonight. Why is it that your love for God only lasts as long as a morning cloud? Why is it that your love for God only lasts as long as the morning dew? Do you still love him? Have this pandemic halted, hindered your love for God? Do you still love him the way you did before this pandemic? Do you still love him now before you may have got struck with COVID-19? Do you still love him just as much or have your love faded like the morning cloud? Have your love disappeared like the sun that melts away the morning dew? What more could I do for you? Matter of fact, in Isaiah 5 and verse 4, he, he actually said the same thing. Isaiah says, what could I have done more to my vineyard, God says, that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look, that it should bring forth grapes, brought forth wild grapes. He, he said, what more could I have done for my vineyard? What more Israel could I have done for you to make you produce good fruit? You had a good father. You had a good God. What more could I have done? But then we get to verse number five. Verse five says, Wherefore have I hewn up them by the prophet? Yes. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as light that goeth forth. Interesting word 
See that word hewn? <laughs> that word hewn. Kata. Kata. It actually means to divide. It means to cut up into pieces. It's to engrave or it to carve a wood or to carve stone or any other material. This, this word hewn carries the idea of a mason taking a stone and chipping away at that stone. And he chips that stone away and he makes certain grooves in that stone so that he can use that stone in a building so that those stones would fit right next to each other. They were, they were just like a puzzle. They just fit right on top of each other. Here's what God is saying through the prophet Hosea. He said that I have hewn you. How do you do? He used the prophets. He used Hosea. He used Jeremiah. He used Amos. He used Isaiah. He used these prophets to hewn uh, the, that the people of Israel. Uh, he cut them into pieces. Well, how did he do that? He said he did it by the words uh, of his mouth. God spoke words that cut them uh, into pieces. But guess what? They still did not obey the prophet Hosea. It reminds me of Hebrews 4.12. In the New Testament, it says, for the word of God, it is quick, it is powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the joint soul and spirits and joint of marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Guess what? The word of God, he said, will cut you. Someone say it'll cut you going, and it'll cut you coming. Hosea said, he'll hewn you with the words of, of his mouth. He will cut you into pieces. But then we get to number six, and this is a famous verse that we probably all remember from the book of Hosea. It's Hosea 6 and verse 6. He says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more been burnt off. All right now. God says, what I really want. Yes. What I really want mm. is mercy. You remember when we was doing the series of the Sermon on the Mount? He that shows mercy shall receive mercy. He that receive mercy shall also show mercy. God said, here's what I really want. Now, I know you bringing all your your sacrifices. Matter of fact, they was bringing their sacrifices. They were still bringing the sacrifices. You remember back in chapter 5, verse number 6, is when they go with their flocks and herds to seek the Lord, he said they will not find him, for he had withdrawn himself from them. See, they were still bringing their sacrifices. In other words, they were still coming to the temple to worship God. But here was the problem. The problem was they was coming, offering up these sacrifices, but their heart was really not in it. They were just going through the, the motion. They were just keeping the ritual. They, they were just doing what they had always done and really was not in the frame of mind to worship God. Someone says worship. When you come to worship, Worship should be a goal, and worship shouldn't be the purpose. Now, when I heard that, I thought, you know, I thought worship was the purpose, yeah, but worship is a goal, because here's what it is. When people come to worship, they come because they want to see what they can get out of it. What can you give me today? What can I get out of it today? No, no, worship is the goal. What do, can you bring today? That's worship, not what you can get out. Now, it's good to get something. It's good to be encouraged. As Hebrews 10, verse 24 said, we ought to do that. 
but you ought to be bringing something to give when you come uh, to worship. So what we have here, we have Israel brought their animals for sacrifice, but they never brought themselves. That's why Paul said in Romans 12 and verse number one, he said, I beseech you brothers by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice. See, they miss what God really wanted. Yes. What is it that God really yes. wanted from the people? It was not the bulls and goats. Yes. It was not the pigeons and doves. What is it that God really wanted? He wanted them. He wanted a yes. deep, close relationship with him. Yes. And that's what God wants from you and I today. Yes. Bringing our dime, nickel and dime is good. Taking the Lord's Supper, yes, that's needful. Yes. Singing praises to yes. encourage one another, that's well and good. But I can go through all of those things yes. if my heart is not with him, if I don't have a deep relationship with him, I'm just going mm. through the motion. That's what Israel was doing. Glory. Going through the motion. Mercy. God says, what I really want. Desire. What I really want. Mm. What I really want. Grateful love. It, it's mm. not your sacrifice. Amen. It's not your burnt offering. What I really want is you. Grateful love. And you remember when Samuel told Saul, I believe in mm. 1 Samuel 15, he told him, he said that what God really wants mm. is not the sacrifice, but he wanted an obedient Obedience, heart. yes. And that's what God expects from us. He says, what I desire yes. is mercy and not sacrifice. Let's close right there because Jesus quoted this passage from Hosea 6 and verse 6 twice. He quoted in Matthew 9 and verse 13. And he quoted it again in Matthew 12, verses 5 through 7. So it was important that even Jesus said, you go learn what this it means. means. You go learn what this means. Yes, I can come together on Sunday and I can preach a sermon, but if I don't know what Hosea 6, 6 mean, I may be just preaching in vain. Yes. You can be coming, but if you don't know what Hosea 6, 6 mean, it may not be benefiting you at all. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Oh, we halfway through. Mm. We'll pick up next week at verse number seven. Yes. If the Lord's will. Now, it was not my intention to spend this much time on chapters four through 11. My intention was just hitting the high points mm. to help you to see that these Come last back. remaining chapters were just about God and Israel and telling Israel to repent yes, and come back come to back. him. And, and in the end, it's not all over. He's going to come back and he's still going to love them. And that's what it's really all about. But after I got to reading it and studying it, it is, it is so close, church, to you and I today. The, thing, the same thing Israel was experiencing is the same thing you and I are experiencing today. I'm going to close right there. Hopefully this will help you as much as it helped me. If you need to give your life to Jesus, it's not too late. Come on. It's not too late. Come on. Just remember the words of Hosea yes. 6 1. Yes. Come. Come on. Return to the Lord. To the Lord. Yes. Come back to him. If you hadn't came, come. Come on. Come. Come on to it. Through faith, yes. repentance, confession, and yes. baptism. Come on. 
Come on to him. Yes. If you're fallen by the wayside, come, come return yes. back unto the Lord. May God bless you. May God bless you real well. Again, enjoy my study time uh, with you tonight. But it's nothing like being in person uh, on tonight. Let's, let's close with a prayer. I don't even think we opened with a prayer, did we? I'm checking with my technician on tonight. My technician's supposed to keep me in line. But let's close with a prayer tonight. We have a prayer request to pray for Shelly and Daniel. They're both sick. Shelly and Daniel. Mm -hmm. Prayer request. Someone sit that in mm -hmm. now soon. We're going to remember Shelly and Daniel, and Daniel both tonight. Are sick. Mm -hmm. Father, we come tonight thanking you for the book of Hosea. Thanking you, Father, for what you are teaching us through this book. We pray for Daniel and Shelly. and Shelly on tonight. Father, we pray that you will heal their bodies. They both are not feeling well, but Father, you already know, and you can make them better. So Father, we ask that you will bless Shelly and Daniel tonight. Heal their bodies. Bring them back stronger uh, than they were before. Again, we thank you for all those who uh, need prayer, all of those on our prayer request uh, list last night, we continue to offer them up as well. We do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. One final announcement. I remember on this coming Saturday, uh, on Saturday, we are passing out those food boxes. Uh, we're going to need as, as many people. Uh, actually, we got 10, but the more I was thinking about that, you know, Look to me like everybody ought to just show up and get a box and carry it to somebody in me. Okay? I mean, you, you don't have to get 10. And you ain't got to know the people. Just show up Saturday. Take a box or two. Give it to somebody you know or you don't know. And watch what God do. Watch God going to get the glory. That may be a door opener. For you to share the gospel with somebody. Just don't go through the motion on Sundays. Amen. But let your light so shine. Amen. And be the salt of the earth. Amen. So if you wasn't one of the ten that gave me a name on last Sunday, just show up anyway. Yes. Don't let somebody take ten boxes. Come back and get two or three or four or five. I would love to have 70 people show up and get one box. Yes. But show up. 10 o'clock Saturday morning. May God bless you. May God bless you well.